click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends, now we are going to discuss the ring counter. So, our heading is what? Ring counter. Now, what is the ring counter? We will see its operation and with logic diagram so with the use of dff that is d flip-flop we are going to design the ring counter specifically four bit ring counter we are going to design with logic diagram and with truth table for its operation purpose so let's start the logic diagram here four bits are there so, four number of D flip-flop we are going to use. These are the four D flip-flops. This is the first flip-flop D0. Output is Q0. DFF0. D1, Q1. DFF1. D2, Q2, DFF2. Then we have D3, Q3, DFF3. Now it is a synchronous counter. So we will apply synchronous clock. Take all the terminals of clock outside and apply a common clock to all the flip flops. This is your common clock for all the flip flops. Now, while designing the ring counter, you have to consider the preset and clear terminals for its operations. So, this becomes your preset terminal, and this becomes all your clear terminal. So, with the use of these terminals, you can design the ring counter. These are the active low signals. That's why we have shown here bubble. Now, this output is connected to the input of the next flip flop while designing the ring counter. And the logic behind the ring counter is what? This Q3 is input to the first flip flop that is D0. In this way, the whole circuit or you can say the logic diagram for ring counter is this. Now we will see its operation. For the operation purpose, we have to use clear terminal, then clock and the outputs that is Q0, Q1, Q2 and Q3. So, we will start the operation of ring counter. First of all, active low signal you have to apply. So preset and clear terminals are active. So we will get the output for Q0 is 1 because preset is low. For QN, clear terminal is low. That's why we get 0. For Q2 and Q3, again we get 0. This is your first step. Then we have to apply a clock signal and inactivate the clear signal. After that, we will apply our negative edge triggered clock signal. So as soon as the clock is applied, this Q0 is given to the D1. So Q1 becomes 1. And this Q3 means this 0 becomes input for D0. So Q0 again becomes 0. And Q2 and Q3 are what? 0, 0. Again, for next application of a clock pulse, specifically a negative edge triggered clock, we have Q1 given to the D2. So Q2 is 1 now and remaining are 0. 
again we give application of negative edge triggered clock so this q2 is fed to the d3 and for d3 we get one and remaining are the outputs again zero if you apply again negative edge triggered clock now this q3 the value of q3 at this stage is one this one is the input to first flip flop so this one comes here and remaining outputs you can get as zero so as this one is again fed to the first flip flop that's why this counter is called as the ring counter this is the operation of ring counter considering clear preset terminal clock signal and q0 q1 q2 q3 are the outputs of each flip flop specifically a d flip flop we have used here and we have considered here four bit ring counter for operation purpose this is all about the basic operation of ring counter thank you for watching this video stay tuned with ikeda and subscribe to ikeda